So hi everyone, welcome back for the last talk of today. Uh, we have uh, uh, Benjamin Antio from the University of Chicago. Uh, no, sorry, is it the University of Chicago? Yeah. Uh, University of Illinois at Chicago. University of Illinois, sorry. Who's going to talk to us about Azumaya algebras in motivic homotopy theory. Great. So uh, thanks. Thanks for the invitation. It's nice to be here. Um, I'm going to, th th this talk is uh, going to be largely about my thinking and hope for uh, being able to weld unstable A1 homotopy theory uh, to say something, really anything, about the theory of Azumaya algebras. Um, and so far, it's been pretty resistant to, um, <clears throat> uh, Azumaya algebras have been pretty resistant to uh, application from motivic homotopy theory, and I'll explain why that is. And, um, and I'll say something about recent results of Stavrova, which open up the possibility for uh, doing something interesting. And I'll say a little bit about that. So first of all, let me just uh, explain um, the, the sort of setting that I have in mind. And I'm going to explain sort of the results on vector bundles um, that I want to model uh, future work on Azimaya algebras after. So um, vector Rx is going to be my notation for the set of isoclasses of rank R vector bundles on a scheme X. And so, for example, if X is affine, this corresponds to rank R uh, projective modules. And now there's a fantastic theorem, which is due to uh, Morel and with generalizations and perhaps simplified proofs due to uh, Ishak, Hoiwa, and Bent, uh, which says the following. So uh, here K is going to be Noetherian, uh, geometrically regular over, let's see, over a Dedekind domain. with perfect residue fields. One example would be Z. Okay. So then if X is, if um, X over K is smooth and affine, then I can compute, or not I, we collectively, I can compute this, this set of isomorphism classes of vector bundles, rank R vector bundles. Well, uh, by definition, this is the set of uh, homotopy classes of maps from X to BGLR, where BGLR is the Zariski or Nisnevich classifying stack of uh, GLR torsors or rank R vector bundles. So this isomorphism is purely tautological. There's a natural map from here to homotopy classes of maps from X to BGLR in the A1 homotopy category. And the, the, the sort of miracle is that this is a uh, bijection. In other words, we can compute um, uh, interesting things about vector bundles by computing internally to the A1 homotopy category. Um, let me sketch very briefly the proof because some points are going to come up in, in the talk. Um, so uh, let me just set this up so I see the chat in case, uh, in case people have questions, which I, I hope you do. So let's just sketch the proof. the major elements that go into this proof. So the first thing is that, um, that this functor, vect Rx, is actually A1 homotopy invariant when we restrict to smooth affine schemes. In other words, if I pull 
back, so I have a natural pullback functor. This is a bijection. And this is for this is for X affine, in, smooth affine and K as above. Okay. And this is really this is really work basically of Quillen, Suslin, uh, Liddell, Popescu. Okay, a lot of people who've worked over the up on this for many years. Um, in the case of um, where we're just working over a field and we look at increasing products with affine spaces, this was Serre's conjecture that every vector bundle on affine space over a field is pulled back from a point or it's trivial in other words. And that was proved by Quillen and Suslin. And, um, and uh, in fact, there's a more general conjecture basically that this is true for any regular no Ethereum affine scheme. And that's the bass serre conjecture, which is open to this day. Um, and that's why we have some, some mild hypotheses in this K here, uh, in, this, in the base that we're working over. So this is the first element of the proof that so we have this A1 invariance result for the actual functor that we're interested in, the, the vector bundles. Um, so B is a general representability result. So, um, so I'm sketching the proof after, uh, after Ishakoiwa event. Um, and it gives a general criterion for when um, um, when we can control the A1 localization, at, at least restricted on affines. So here, let's let F be in this Navit sheaf of spaces. On uh, like smooth over K. Um, and they, they, they get away with slightly uh, milder hypothesis, uh, but for us, it's not gonna matter. So if the pre-sheaf pi zero f, in other words, this is the thing where you just take in a, a case, a smooth case scheme, evaluate this, the func, the, 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 the f that you give, get some space and you take the set of path components of that space. So that gives you a pre-sheaf of sets. So if the pre-sheaf is A1 uh, homotopy, is, is A1 invariant on affines, um, well then the, uh, let's see, the Zariski sheafification of sing A1 F is actually Nisnevich and A1 local. Nis Nay, okay, well, that kind of looks like Nisnevich. Um, and A1 local. And, um, you know, meaning that we don't have to do a, a transfinite um, construction where we A1 localize and then sheafify and then A1 localize and sheafify. We can get something good after a sort of a single step of each. Um, and this has the consequence that if I take pi zero of L czar um, sing A1 F of X, and there's a natural map to this from pi zero of F of X. This is a bijection for uh, X over K smooth affine. In other words, the process of A1 sort of of, of motivic localization doesn't change the value of this sheaf when restricted to smooth affines. Um, and uh, well, and then and then the final part of the is of the proof is just um, use uh, a and plus the fact that that B G L R uh, is in this neighbor sheaf of spaces. Um, okay, so that's the end of the proof. Um, so uh, this is very easy, uh, you know, given that I've put all of the hard work in the statement of their theorem. Uh, okay, but it gives a general criterion for 
the representability of this pre-sheaf pi is zero. And you know, a priori, this process of motivic localization could radically change pi zero. Let me note also, just as a, as a kind of remark, while pi zero, like, um, mm, the, this sort of, the theorems of these famous people tell you that in this case, this vect R, which is the set of homotopy classes here, that's A1 invariant. But the higher homotopy groups are just absolutely not A1 invariant. Okay, um, was I gonna say that later? Maybe I was. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna say it now. So, you know, just remark, um, like, you know, pi one, this pre sheaf BGLR, is not A1 invariant. Just for the simple fact that pi one BGLR of, uh, of an affine spec R is just GL1R. And I can compare GL1K, uh, why GL1? GLR, R, GLRK. GLRK versus GLRK adjoint T, well, these are just radically different. For example, um, you know, because I can put, I can put some matrix like 1T01, and clearly uh, that's not going to be in the image of the natural map here. Okay, so this is kind of miraculous because even though these sheaves are just really not a1 invariant uh, they're not they're not um you know when we when we motivically localize we are able or event are able to maintain some control um with that you know otherwise perhaps they couldn't okay so that's just a little bit about vector bundles and you know, it's been my hope for a long, long time, and not only mine, I imagine, that, you know, you could do something similar uh, for some other types of torsors. Um, and uh, we'll see some examples of what's, what's good and what's bad in that direction um, as we go on. So please interrupt if there are any questions. So that was just a little bit of background and it provides a template of where, where we'd like to get uh, in the theory. So let me say a little bit about backgrounds of uh, vector bundles and, and um, as my algebras, uh, sorry, as my algebras and Brouwer, Brouwer group. And the easiest way to sort of think of this is, well, vect Rx, this corresponds to twisted forms isomorphism classes of twisted forms of just OX direct sum R, that coherent sheaf, okay? And this twisted can really be taken in the Zariski, Nisnevich, Etal, or FPPF topologies. Um, so there's no particular uh, difference uh, what your notion of local is, or uh, for this, this case of, of vector bundles. And um, Azumaya algebras of degree R on X, this is the degree, these are twisted forms of the algebra given by R by R matrices over the structure sheet. So this is a, an associative but non-commutative algebra, and we can ask for twisted forms um, uh, uh, of this, but so these twisted forms are really, they're still algebras, okay? Um, note that the rank of this is, uh, so the degree is R, the rank is R squared, if I'm viewing that just as a vector bundle. And it's important for the theory to really consider a tall twisted forms, or you could do FPPF if you want. Um, there are typically not enough Zariski or Nisnevich twisted forms to get an interesting theory. Um, 
And that's already the first sign that we might have a little trouble integrating this into the usual theory of uh, unstable motivic homotopy. Um, all right. So it turns out that um, if I look at the automorphism uh, group scheme, um, so I'm going to look at algebra automorphisms of R by R matrices. Um, so this is actually isomorphic to the group scheme PGLR. Um, and the way to see this is, is, is roughly the following. Um, so there's a map GLR. Uh, uh, so what is PGLR? PGLR is the quotient of GLR by its center, which is GM. Here, this is the map that sends lambda to the diagonal matrix, lambda on the diagonal and zero elsewhere. That's precisely the subgroup of all, um, of all, you know, that's the center of GLR. Okay, those are the things that um, commute with everything. And now if I have an, an R by R matrix M, um, I can get an automorphism of the an invertible R by R matrix. PGLR, right, PGLR is, is a over X, but of course this group scheme is base changed from the integers. It exists over the integers. It's a smooth group scheme over the integers, thanks. If I have, a, if I have a, an invertible matrix M, then I can go to the automorphism of the matrix algebra that sends N to M inverse N, M, just by conjugation. That gives me a map from GLR to the automorphism group scheme. And the theorem is that that's surjective, okay? Um, this, so that theorem is, I guess, uh, Skolem Nuther. Um, in other words, every automorphism of the matrix algebra um, uh, sort of a tall locally lifts to a, um, to, or actually really is a risky locally, I should say, lifts to an actual uh, um, R by R matrix. Okay. But the fact that we understand uh, that the, the automorphisms means that as Rx is isomorphic to H1, let's say with a tall coefficients X PGLR. Okay. This projective general linear group, well, let me write down a let me write down a, a different presentation of it. So I have uh, one into mu R into SLR. Uh, that's the center of, uh, of SLR, the R by R matrices with determinant one. And the quotient there is also PGLR. So there you need to be working in the FPPF topology for that to actually work out. Otherwise, uh, there's some problems if, if R is divisible by the residue characteristics. Um, but that's not going to be really a central point of our talk. So I get a, I get a boundary map um, in non-abelian cohomology from H1. I'll just write, I'll omit X for the moment. H2 mu R. And this really should be FPPF cohomology. The rest could, or should, can just be at all. Um, and this, this, this square commutes, it sends an Azumaya algebra A to, I'll just write the class of A inside H2GM. And the commutativity of this diagram says that R times the class of A is zero. So this is a torsion class in the GM, the, eight, the degree two GM cohomology. So I'll write et al, et al, et al. I could put FPPFs in all four spots, but Grotendieck proved that the FPPF and the et al cohomology of a smooth group, affine group scheme, that those agree. So, um, okay, anyways. Now uh, let's define the Brouwer group. And first I'm going to define the cohomological Brouwer group. So this is equal to uh, the torsion 
in the degree two cohomology, and let's just restrict our definition to the case that X is quasi-compact and quasi-separated. If not, then this could be the wrong definition because, um, so, right, uh, this observation implies that the, this class lives in this torsion subgroup. If X weren't quasi-compact, you know, it could have different degrees on a bunch of different components. And the class might not be torsion if X is too big. Brouwer X, this is the subgroup of Brouwer prime um, on the classes uh, that are actually in the image of all of these boundary maps. So this is subgroup of A, as A ranges over all Azumai algebras. So, um, now it's a big sort of classical problem uh, from going back to Grodendieck when these two are equal. Let me just say that these two groups are equal for any quasi-projective scheme over an affine space. So in particular, we're going to be working for, with affine schemes over affines. So it, these two groups will be the same in all cases that, that I care about. Um, and let me just sort of give a little bit of, of, of a flavor of what's happening in this group if I have uh, class A minus A um, is given by the class of the opposite algebra, which is also a matrix, which is also a, an Azumai algebra. Um, a plus B if, uh, is given by the class of a tensor B. A tensor B turns out to be an, uh, an Azumai algebra. Um, well, we already saw that R times a is zero if a if the degree of a is r. Um, and you know, just by what we said before, this happens to also be a tensor itself, r times. Okay. So let me um, explain uh, a couple. Right. Um, maybe I should explain some examples. Okay. So if K is a field, then the Azumai algebras, these correspond to the central simple algebras. Central simple means it's a finite dimensional K algebra, which is simple as an algebra, and the center is exactly K. And in that case, the Brouwer group of K, or the Brouwer group of spec K, is the set of isomorphism classes of uh, sort of K division algebras. K division algebra meaning it's a finite dimensional uh, uh, K-algebra, which uh, has no non-zero, you know, in which every non-zero element is invertible and the center is exactly K. It's not some extension of K. Okay. Um, so the sort of most, by far the most classical example of one of these division algebras is if we look at the Hamiltonian quaternions over the real numbers. Okay, this is a degree two uh, Azumai algebra or degree two central simple algebra. How do I know it's degree two? Well, because if I take H and I tensor it up to the complex numbers, this is isomorphic as an algebra to two by two matrices right. over the complex numbers. So this is a tall locally, a twisted form of two by two matrices over the complex numbers. Another example, of a, of, uh, right, so if E over X is a vector bundle, then um, the sheaf of endomorphisms of E is an, is an Azumai algebra. 
And this gives an interpretation of part of the long exact sequence or medium length exact sequence in non-abelian cohomology that I get. I go from GLR to H1X PGLR, say that the vector bundle has rank R um, to H2X uh, GM. And here A goes to the class of A in the Brouwer group. And what is this map um, when I interpret GLR torsors as being vector bundles, this exactly takes E to the class, to uh, the um, Azumaya algebra and E. In particular, by the exactness of this, I see that the class of and E is zero in the, in the Brouwer group of X. Okay. So somehow what this Brouwer group is doing is it's a kind of Grotendieck uh, group construction or um, where we're forcing anything of the form endomorphisms of a vector bundle to be zero. Okay. And it turns out that when we do that, we actually get a group, um, which is not completely obvious, but it is true. Okay, so let me... Um, say a bunch more things ab about this to try to give you a taste of what's happening. And, um, and then, uh, then we'll get on to the A1 homotopy theory. Any, any questions? I should say like, um, Maybe I'll give one more example, which is a little bit of a different flavor, uh, but is really important. Philosophically, a lot of times these Brouwer classes come up is when, um, when there's some kind of moduli of vector bundles, that's not fine. When there's a moduli space of vector bundles, that, that, that's not fine. It doesn't have a universal vector bundle, in which case, um, these elements in the Brouwer group and uh, Azumaya algebras arise as obstructions to um, lifting points from a coarse moduli space to the actual moduli stack of vector bundles that you're looking at. So let me give a really quick example just because I, I like it, frankly. So let's let X over S be a smooth, uh, proper, geometrically connected curve. of genus G. S is some base. And um, well, um, I have the, I have a, a Lorray Serre spectral sequence. So let's call this morphism uh, P. And then um, let's look at P. So RP lower star zero of GM. Well, because this is proper and geometrically connected, this is isomorphic to GM. So here I mean GMX, here I mean GMS. RP lower star one GMX. This is isomorphic to the, the Picard, uh, the coarse moduli space, pick X over S. This is the Picard scheme. And then the higher groups are whatever they are, but it's not gonna really matter for us. And there's a, there's a Leray serre spectral sequence going from um, you know, the cohomology of S with coefficients in these higher push forwards of GM um, uh, and converging to the GM cohomology of X. And I get a, a long exact sequence in low degree, or uh, I don't know, what do you call it? The sort of five term exact sequence. Um, well, uh, pick S goes to pick X. That's just pullback of line bundles. That goes to pick X over S, S. Rational points, sections of the Picard scheme. And this goes to H2 SGM. And then this goes to H2 XGM. And um, this is an exact sequence. And uh, so if I have a section here, so for example, if, 
sort of parenthetically, if S is spec K for a field and G is the absolute Galois group, then this pick X over S S would usually be written as pick of X base change to the algebraic closure or separable closure and then Galois invariance. And there's an obstruction. If I have a Galois invariant line bundle on the algebraic closure, there's an obstruction to lifting it to an actual line bundle on X. That obstruction lives in the Brouwer group of S. So um, let's pick uh, L, such a, such a class, and let's suppose it has degree D, um, and let's suppose D is more than 2G minus 2. This implies that, um, uh, that H1 of this sort of thing vanishes on the algebraic closure. By, um, so L might or might not lift to, uh, to, to a line bundle on X. This is some kind of near, nearly line bundle. Um, but let's call alpha the, uh, the boundary. It's the Brouwer class that we get by, by applying this boundary map to this particular point. At some Brouwer class, and um, and the point is that L is a kind of alpha twisted line bundle. Um, it's not. It's not uh, on 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 X. It's not an actual line bundle. It's an alpha twisted line bundle. But the point is that these alpha twisted line bundles, and I'll, I'll come back and say more about this, I guess, later uh, in the talk, um, these have good functoriality properties. And so in particular, P lower star L is an alpha twisted vector bundle on S of rank given by Riemann rock. The, the fibers are given by H zero of this line bundle. I don't have to worry about H1 because I've chosen this to be very positive. And uh, so the rank is D plus one minus G. Okay. Um, which is, I guess, uh, what? I guess is more than G minus one, but anyways, okay. So this is some alpha twisted line bundle. Whatever an alpha twisted vector bundle is, it has the property that it has an ordinary sheaf of endomorphisms and end of P lower star L it is a degree D plus one minus G as in my algebra with class alpha. So as in my algebra on S with class alpha. So that's one way that, uh, that these appear uh, in arithmetic questions um, or sort of more generally, whenever you're looking at moduli of something like vector bundles, where there's this GM action on the set on, you know, via isomorphisms. Uh, ben, may I ask? Uh, yep. Haven't you taught me that if you have an alpha twisted line bundle that alpha is actually trivial? That's correct. So alpha is trivial on X, but it's not trivial on, on X. Yes, so if alpha is trivial on X, doesn't it give an actual bundle? Right, but it's not, um, it, it just means that there's, you can choose a, um, how to say this, oops, sorry. I'm trying to pick something off of the iPad. Okay, um, having an alpha twisted line bundle does give you an equivalence between alpha twisted sheaves and non-alpha twisted sheaves, but it, it's not necessarily interesting by itself because all you really know is that, that under that equivalence, your chosen line bundle will just go to the structure sheaf. So it's, it's somehow not really giving you anything extra. extra. The, the interesting point here is that in general, when we push down whether, you know, even though, as you say, the, this 
class is trivial on X, meaning specifically P upper star alpha is zero. Because there's an alpha twisted line bundle, as you observe, um, uh, it's not true on S. This is a Brouwer class on S. And the push forward is an alpha twisted vector bundle. And that really is genuinely interesting, typically. Um, okay. There's another question. As a my algebra should twist QCO? Do the twisted, yeah, right, exactly. Uh, the twisted line bundles are, 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 um, are in, uh, yeah, so maybe, maybe I'll just, I'll just say, um, basically, um, G, uh, sort of BGM. Okay, I'll, now I'm going to define alpha twisted vector bundles and so forth, since it seems like we're talking about it enough anyways, and this will come up later. So BGM acts on, on the stack of, of quasi-coherent sheaves or complexes or perfect complexes by tensoring with line bundles. And so a BGM torsor give twists of QCO. Well, BGM torsor, if you like, I would write that as H1 BGM, but that's of course H2 of X BGM. And that's the Brouwer group that we've been talking about, or that the Brouwer group's a subgroup. And if I have alpha in here, the corresponding twist of QCO, I'll call QCO alpha. And there, because line bundles are perfect complexes, this also twists perf alpha, uh, perfect complexes, or it twists the derived category, or so forth. Right. Yes, it should be BGM right here. Thank you. Um, and the, the sort of main thing to know is that if alpha is in the Brouwer group of X, and if this is the class of an Azumai algebra A, then there's a Morita equivalence between say QCO alpha and it, you know, what you would call like QCO A, which is just modules over A, A and QCO. But this is not canonical. Okay. So twisted, twisted sheaves correspond to uh, uh, um, this formalism of twisted sheaves correspond to um, modules over as my algebras. But in some sense, it's kind of nice to look at uh, uh, the twisted sheaves because it doesn't rely on choosing a specific as my algebra representative of the Brouwer class. So that sometimes is nice. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll come back to that perspective uh, in a bit. Okay, let me give a couple more definitions here in our sort of general Browery area. Um, uh, so first of all, uh, the period of a class alpha, this is the order of alpha in the Brouwer group. Remember that this is a torsion group because it's in H2XGM torsion. Um, and um, let me define mon alpha. This is the, mo the monoid of alpha, mon for monoid. This is, yeah, so this is the degree monoid of alpha. And what it is, it's the set of R such that there exists an Azumaya algebra of degree R with uh, the class of A is equal to alpha, Azumaya algebra A. So I look at all possible Azumaya algebras representing my class, and I just look at all of their degrees. It's a list of non-negative integers, okay? And it turns out to be a monoid. Um, the easiest way to see that it's a monoid is really via, uh, Um, via the theory of twisted sheaves, because basically these degrees, 
these are the same as the ranks of alpha twisted vector bundles. And if I have two alpha twisted vector bundles, I can take their direct sum. So I see that I can add this. So this, sub, this is a submonoid of the natural numbers. Um, and it's even an, it's a sub n module. for what it's worth. Um, and the, finally, the index of alpha is the GCD of uh, this mon alpha. The sort of main thing connecting these two things, which is a theorem of Noether and then myself and Ben Williams, uh, is that the period of alpha divides the index and they have the same prime divisors. These two numbers have the same prime divisors. So, oh wow, there's so many, so much to tell you. Um, wow, okay. Right, so, mm. okay, let me just let me just say what the main conjecture here is. So suppose that I have um, x over the complex numbers is a irreducible variety of dimension d. And I take alpha in the Brouwer group of the function field of X. So the conjecture is that the, uh, the index of alpha divides the period of alpha to the D minus one. There's a specific relationship between these two numbers, which says that the index of alpha, which is sort of the size of this, the division algebra in this class, it can't be too big with respect to the period. And um, this is totally open. So D equals zero is basically trivial because the Brouwer group is zero. D equals one is, it's also zero, but it's harder to prove that Sen's theorem. D equals two, this is known by De Jong. And it's not true, it's not known rather, not known for a single function field of higher dimension. including P, P3, for example, okay, the function field of P3. This is completely open and, uh, and at the moment, untouchable. So, of course, when you, you know, come across a problem like this, you, you know, you want to attack it with sort of everything at your disposal. And, uh, and A1 homotopy theory is one of those. And, um, and let me let me say a little bit about uh, let me say a little bit about uh, why you might think that that's a good idea. Um, just a second. So. <clears throat> um, So first of all, um, there's a theorem of de Jong and Starr which globalizes this. It reduces this type of problem over the function fields to a similar problem just for Brouwer classes on smooth projective varieties. Okay, so that theorem, so theorem de Jong and this is de Jong and Starr. So it's enough to check this period index relation for alpha inside the Brouwer group of X, the Brouwer group of X injects into the Brouwer group of the function field if X is smooth. And so we need this for X smooth and projective of dimension D. Um, 
in other words, we can somehow globalize the theorem. And that's always given me a lot of hope that we can attack it with more global methods. Um, rather, you know, where we're really looking at varieties rather than looking at um, uh, the sort of arithmetic of function fields. So here's some other facts. Um, which might make you hopeful. First of all, if I look at the pullback map, um, this is an isomorphism for X uh, regular Noetherian. And here the prime means, you look at, these are torsion groups and you look at classes of order prime to the residue characteristics. So in the case of characteristic zero, we're just saying that the full Brouwer group is A1 invariant. Two, um, let's suppose I have alpha in the Brouwer group of X and alpha A1 is the pullback to the Brouwer group of X cross A1. The basis C, well, in one, in, in part one here, or thing. Uh, for, for, for one, th these facts are for any, fact one is for any regular no Ethereum scheme at all. Facts two is, I think, for any scheme at all. Um, there's no particular base quite yet. So if I have alpha and Brouwer X, alpha A1 denotes its pullback to X cross A1, then the period of alpha is equal to the period of alpha A1. The monoid, uh, the degree monoid of alpha is equal to the degree monoid of alpha A1. And so of course that means the index of alpha is equal to the index of alpha A1. So, well, Clearly, that's pretty promising from the perspective of A1 homotopy theory, right? I have, you know, uh, the, everything I care about in this problem is A1 invariant, okay? All, all of the things. And so the goal would be to, um, to, to make use of this. But now I've got some bad news, everyone. Uh, so I've got some bad news. So, so first, in order to make use, so, so I should have said in this, in this Eshakoiwa vent theorem, the whole point, they get this A1 representability result for vector bundles. And then they're able, Eshak and Hoiwa prove some amazing theorems on the classification of vector bundles on smooth affine schemes, oh, say over the complex numbers. Um, really incredible results that go way beyond what you could have done with classical methods. A crucial part of their work requires computing the, um, the homotopy sheet, the A1 homotopy sheaves of BGLR. And in particular, that requires choosing a base point. Okay. But that's okay, BGLR is, is connected. Okay, it's, it's, it's even motivically connected. So there's no real harm in choosing a base point. The first thing that happens is that BGL, BPGLR rather, is not uh, Nisnevich locally connected. That means when you go and try to compute the homotopy groups that you're going to need, or the homotopy sheaves that you're going to need to compute in order to do obstruction theory to try to construct some classes, well, you have to choose a base point. But choosing a base point with a given Brouwer class is just a, already equivalent to saying something about the index, right? So, you know. 
in other words, it's just not very helpful to, to do this. Um, because of, right, because you have to choose, you, cho you have to choose a base point. And, and if you can do that for BPGLR, if you can choose a base point with, uh, with Brouwer class alpha, that means that uh, the index of alpha already has to divide R. Okay, so just asserting that there is a base point uh, is a bit dangerous. Um, and this is really a case where, in principle, different base points will give you totally different uh, sheaves, um, totally different homotopy groups. So that is sad face number one. Sad face number two, and even more damning, um, and in some sense somewhat surprising given uh, the A1 invariance of like all of the other numerical aspects of this problem, Smiley face, or sad face number two, is that the set of, azuma, of isomorphism classes of Azumaya algebras of uh, degree R, this is just not A1 invariant. On smooth affines. Even over the complex numbers. So, um, so that's sort of a bummer, and it, it, it's, uh, if you like, um, if you like, it's a nail in the coffin for somehow using this to prove something about period index. Um, so there's examples, there's examples to, Due to um, uh, Oyanguran and Sertarin from, I guess, 1971. What they prove in particular, um, I mean, it's kind of interesting the way that this can happen, and it points towards a potential fix. Um, but one thing they can they show is that you can have a situation where uh, you have uh, two Azumaya algebras, A and B of degree, D, of degree R, and the, the Brouwer classes are the same. And in fact, the N by N matrices over them are isomorphic for some N. So that actually implies the first thing, but A is not isomorphic to B. So there's a kind of failure of a cancellation problem that they that they uncover in their paper, and uh, and that's going to be that's going to be a big problem. So, okay. So now let me uh, say the main theorem that I think uh, really suggests that there is still something to do here, and. Um, but it's just not about period, the period index problem. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, okay. Um, so let's give some, some groups. I have an Azumai algebra A of degree D. Um, so then, of course, I can form uh, the, the ring of uh, D by D matrices. Oh, I'm sorry. What am I trying to do here? Um, bah, that's not what I wanted to do. Scratch that. Now, um, let me just remark that if I take GLN of MDO, this is the structure sheaf on whatever scheme I'm looking at. In other words, these are invertible n by n matrices with entries d by d matrices. Okay, so what is this? Well, this is just the same as G L N D. Okay, so in particular, A is a twisted form of 
d by d matrices over O. So that means that GLNA is a twisted form of the group scheme, is a sort of X twisted form of, uh, of the group scheme GL, uh, GLND. And what is this? This is automorphisms uh, of the left or right A module A plus N. Okay. And so as, as usual, I get uh, exact sequences, um, uh, GLNA, PGLNA to one. So this PGLNA is a twisted form of PGLND. Um, and then I also have uh, uh, sort of SLNA. Uh, there's a determinant map from GLNA to GN. So I get, uh, I get there's a often called a reduced norm, but it's really just a determinant. It's an observation that the determinant map twists for free. Um, so, uh, so I, get, I have these I have these group schemes, and um, uh, let's let's define as d alpha to be the sort of isoclasses of Azumai algebras of degree d with class alpha. So one way to, to construct this is I can take the pullback in this Navich sheaves or, well, right. Here I really mean et al. And here B squared et al GM. And this is the map classified by alpha. I take the pullback and then as D is just the uh, as D alpha blank is just the pre sheaf pi zero as D alpha. <clears throat> this is a stack. Um, and uh, well, it turns out, of course, that this is, uh, um, it's the Zariski class or Nisnevich classifying space of PGL1 of, of the SMI algebra A. Okay, so let me just say a couple more words here. Let me, let me state the theorem. And it turns out PGL1 of A is bad. That's kind of what, that's, that's gonna be the philosophy coming from, um, from this example of Oyanguran and Sridharan. It, it just doesn't behave very well, as far as I can tell or as far as anyone knows. Um, but let me state the following theorem, which is, um, this is, this is really due to, this is a special case of, uh, of a result of, of Stavrova, Anastasia. So she proves, uh, something stronger than this. Okay, so A is going to be, uh, let's see, an Azumai algebra of degree D. Uh, class alpha. Um, on uh, S, which is spec R. And let's see, let's see, I want R should contain an infinite field. So if n is more than one, then the two, um, uh, pre-sheaves H1 NIS with coefficients in BGLNA and H1 NIS with coefficients in BP, sorry, let me rewrite this. The PGLNA 
our A1 invariant on a smooth affine, I guess, R schemes now. So here, this is the thing that basically is giving us as um, ND alpha. And this is the thing that's giving us vect ND alpha uh, blank. So, sorry, uh, don't you need et al for S? Or is Nisnievich enough? Um, what, what, what was the question? I'm sorry, don't, do I need et al? Yeah, I mean, aren't as my algebra et al locally trivialized, not Nisnievich locally? Right, but I'm saying, I'm looking at, um, so um, this, this classifies, okay, they're, they're at all locally trivialized, it's true, but um, this really classifies all possible Azumaya algebras that look like um, that look like M N of A on every local ring. So we don't want to say that we're looking at everything which is locally zero, which is a tall locally zero. We're really saying. Uh, you know, let's look at everything which is sort of a just a Nisnevich twisted form of M and A. Those will all have the same Brouwer class. And the problems that happen for PGLN and the Atoll, and the Atoll torsors actually go away for the Nisnevich torsors. That's exactly what this theorem says. So the, these, these really are isomorphism classes of degree n times d Azumai algebras with class alpha. And these are the same, but for rank n d alpha twisted vector bundles. And as long as n is at least one, it turns out that these are a one homotopy invariant. For n equals one, it's not true. And it's kind of a weird situation. It's like pick not being a one invariant. Right, that's the easy one. Okay, to prove classically as a one invariant. Here it doesn't work, but if we if we bump up the rank a little bit, things get much much better. That's what this theorem really says. And so the corollary of this is um, is basically that the same thing that uh, well, for example, it's that uh, sort of. Let's just say this one as n d alpha x is actually computed by homotopy classes of maps from x to b p g l uh, n of a uh, in the a one homotopy category. And there's a similar theorem for uh, for this for this alpha twisted vector bundles at all as well. And the proof of this corollary just is basically takes Tvorov's result and put it into the Ishak Hoa event machine. Okay. Um, ah, yeah, sorry, I keep writing this. Let's just delete B everywhere. If it looks, yeah, right. Thank you for the question. Um, so, the, so the upshot, I'll, I'll, I'll just end, end with this. So the upshot is, and this is what sort of got me interested in this line of thinking. There are basically no results of geometric interest on classification of twisted vector bundles or as in my algebras, nothing. But these, um, and, and it makes sense if you're gonna do that to sort of stratify by Brouwer class. These results of Stavrova really tell you that you can start to try to bring that into A1 homotopy theory. Now we have these nice functors. Um, we can compute 
uh, the things that we care about using Owen homotopy theory. And you can hope now, you can hope that you can compute something about the higher homotopy groups of these stacks. See, the point is that this is actually Nisnevich locally connected. This is really B, B Nis. Um, and, I, and I think there's a wide range of interesting classification problems that this, uh, that this brings up. And anyways, I just wanted to tell you about that story and especially this theorem of Stavrovo, which I think is great. And I'll stop there. Thank you very much for the very, very nice talk. Uh, so are the other questions? a question by Eldin in the chat. I'm going to read it out loud just for, for the sake of the recording. Maybe, oh, yeah. oh, it's maybe not a question, it's a remark. Maybe it's worth noting that homotopy classes from X to BGL, BPGL, and K are isomorphism classes of projectivization of vector bundles by a paper, by paper of Ireland, hence not, not interesting. Right. Um. Yeah, right. I mean, that's true. So like, if, if you look at sort of X to B NIS PGLN A, I guess you can do this A1. You can understand what this is for X smooth and affine, but being this Navich locally trivial just implies that you're, the, you're, you're, uh, you're of the form and of some actual vector bundle. Sorry, do you mean K then? Instead of e. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Be just let me just say this. Right. So, uh, yeah, so that's not so interesting. You know, what you're really doing in, in, in this uh, in this picture is, you know, you have B a tall GM, as I wrote before. Now, this is not Nisnevich locally connected. It has a ton of different base points, right? Basically, one for each element of the Brouwer group. And, um, and right, B a tall PGLN um, X here, alpha. And you want to understand the pullback. And that's related to understanding, well, I have this X PGLN to H2 et al uh, X uh, GM, the fibers, what do I mean by the fiber? The kernel, in other words, the elements that actually go to zero is, is a quotient of H1 X GLN. But this exact sequence says nothing about the fibers over alpha not equal to zero. It just literally says nothing. Okay, and that's why you need to consider these twisted forms of these group schemes. E at BGM, I assume, in the bottom right of your square. This one. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So that's what that's what twisting these group schemes do. These are non-split forms of of the ad, of adjoint, you know, uh, type A N groups. And uh, they let you analyze the other fibers in these long exact sequences. And then we can hope to actually, I mean, it turns out that we can hope to say something interesting. Okay, other questions? No? Uh, I have another question. So you said that you're happy about this uh, result uh, of the young thing and someone uh, which rephrases period index problem from function fields to actual power groups of schemes. So why, why does it simplify anything to go from a field to a scheme? Well, 
I mean, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Uh, I, I would say, I mean, because you can use global methods potentially. Um, the, Brouwer, the Brouwer groups of schemes are typically much smaller than the Brouwer groups of their function fields, right? For example, the Brouwer group of P2 over the complex numbers is zero. Uh, the Brouwer group of its function field is massive. I see. So it at least conceptually seems to make things a little bit cl uh, more clear. But let me emphasize in this theorem of de Jong and Starr, to prove this in the given dimension, you. I mean, you have to prove it for all function fields. It's not like to prove it for X, you, or to prove it for the function field of X, you have to prove it for X. No, to prove mm -hmm. it for all function fields of dimension D, you have to prove it for all smooth projective varieties of dimension D. Well, yeah, because of the, at least because of the example you mentioned, if P2 has bar group zero, then yeah, <laughs> clearly. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, so it's just a feeling, I mean, already in the proof of de Jong's theorem here that for d equals two, he uses an early version of this result to reduce to the unramified case, in other words, where the class spreads out over the whole smooth proper scheme. And then you're able to use some extra stuff. Specifically, he uses proper base change in a, in a total cohomology with finite coefficients at some point to get a little bit of extra love. And that, that turns out to be a crucial part of the argument. Um, it's just a feeling, though, in the end. I see. Well, if the bar groups are smaller, that's a very reasonable feeling. <laughs> cool, thank you. Yeah. OK. Other questions? Well, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank if you not, very much. Thank the speaker. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. So let me stop the recording. Yay! Thank you all for coming. Also. <laughs>